Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Explosives require delicate handling, but what if a little bomb is detonated inside an aircraft engine? While it's hard to believe, the U.S. Air Force trusts this method to scramble their jets into life. It is time to explore more of the genius methods used during the takeoff and landing of military aircraft. When the B-52 bomber took to the skies in 1952 for its maiden flights, the pilots would not have thought that the same aircraft would serve the nation with pride seven decades later. The newest B-52H bombers came into service in 1962 and are expected to serve even beyond 2050. The B-52H is soon to be converted to the B-52J with the much-anticipated engine change by moving to Rolls-Royce F-130 engines. from the existing Pratt & Whitney TF-33 engines. Along with the many other enhancements, the Stratofortress got its eyes polished as its obsolete radar was updated with a new active electronically scanned array, or AESA radar. To everyone's surprise, the B-52 is not fitted with an auxiliary power unit, or APU, which mandates using an air cart and a generator to get the aircraft to life. Two engines out of eight will be started, and then the other pairs will follow the same procedure. This lumbering process takes a significant amount of time to get the aircraft moving. During an emergency, every minute matters. A delay could count in lives lost or saved. Hence, getting this behemoth airborne in the shortest possible time is of utmost importance. The U.S. Air Force devised the genius yet awe-inspiring idea to explode the engine to circumvent the lengthy starting procedure. A cartridge, a shotgun shell-like unit, is placed in a dedicated spot within the engine so the crew can detonate it electrically to create a huge amount of air that helps to rotate the engine. More importantly, all eight engines can be started simultaneously. This will cut down the engine starting time from more than an hour to just 10 minutes and allow the B-52s to surprise their enemies with a brisk comeback use that opportunity to train in a uh, dynamic fight where we can uh, optimize our communication and tactics across a broad spectrum of warfare. So the B-52 is one of our uh, most capable Air Force assets and is capable of launching and employing uh, almost every single weapon type that the Air Force is uh, capable of using. Everything from uh, maritime support through mining operations to standoff weapons and uh, smart precision guided munitions for air to ground employment. This aircraft from the 1950s has received continuous upgrades for the past 70 years and has remained the mainstay bomber in the U.S. Air Force. Continuous upgrades paved the way for the Strato Fortress to engage in modern warfare missions like Operation Desert Storm and Allied Force. Despite the upgrades, the B-52 was left with specific analog systems, making it a mishmash of old-school and state-of-the-art equipment. It took almost six decades since the introduction of the B-52 for a communication retrofit. The B-52 pilots 
had to rely on the obsolete cathode ray displays until the B-52s were fitted with Boeing's Combat Network Communications Technology System, or CONNECT, which started in 2013. With the upgrade, the bomber could receive data digitally from the aircraft systems rather than receiving it via radio and entering it manually by the pilots. Undoubtedly, the B-52 is a flying fortress with an arsenal that could wipe out a city in one go. With that said, the bomber weighs 185,000 pounds by itself. While it weighs a whopping 488,000 pounds at the maximum takeoff weight point. While the B 52 inherits a hefty structure by design, stopping the bomber during landing has always been challenging. To assist wheel braking, the B 52 has a drogue parachute hiding in its tail cone. Usually, a landing deacceleration parachute is deployed to slow down the aircraft when landing on a short or contaminated runway. The pilot chute deploys with the activation signal from the cockpit, and the drag created by the pilot chute deploys the drogue parachute. The B-52 bomber houses a 44-foot diameter landing deacceleration parachute to assist its braking during landings. With the wide application of drogue chutes in many industries, they have proven to be successful at deaccelerating and stabilizing the aircraft during the landing roll while cutting a significant portion of the rollout distance, saving time and, more importantly, reducing carbon brake wear. While some of the airplanes are scrambling to life in a matter of minutes, some airplanes require a definite sequence and close monitoring during the start. One such example is the engine start of the C-130 Hercules. The four Allison T-56 turboprop engines powering the Hercules follow a sequence during engine startup. The propellers on the right wing, engine numbers three and four, initiate the starting sequence, while engine number three is the very first to receive pneumatics from the APU. Once both right wing engines are up and running, the engines on the left wing receive pneumatics for the startup. The C-130 is self-sustaining as it houses an auxiliary power unit located ahead of the left wheel well. The APU provides the required air pressure to each engine through the air turbine starter. Usually, a pre-flight inspection is carried out prior to each engine starting for takeoff. This ensures the engines are free from ailments and in proper condition for a spin. During the pre-flight inspection, maintenance personnel conduct a walk-around, covering each corner of the aircraft. A typical walk around is divided into two phases, inspecting the top of the aircraft and the exterior of the aircraft. To inspect the top of the aircraft, maintenance technicians climb onto the aircraft and walk on the fuselage and wings, scouring for defects. More importantly, Engine nacelles are inspected for proper closure of service panels and the condition of propellers and de-icing boots. During the exterior walk around, engines are inspected from a different angle to identify fluid leakages and their general condition.
While the cartridge start and other measures are intended to cut down the takeoff time, refueling can be a point that introduces a bottleneck in the overall process. The U.S. Air Force came up with the genius method of hot pit refueling, cutting down the time taken for refueling to expedite the turnaround time. As the name suggests, during the hot pit refueling, the engines of the aircraft remain running. When the refueling is done, the aircraft can take off quickly to join the mission. The Versatile Integrating Partner Equipment Refueling Kit, or Viper Kit, is the newest addition to hot pit refueling that allows a multitude of aircraft to receive fuel from the same source. The Viper Kit is a universal system that can be fitted with various adapters depending on the aircraft being refueled. The kit improves the interoperability of U.S. aircraft as they can receive fuel from any source with the Viper Kit without needing full refueling gear. This saves a small fortune for the U.S. Air Force and Allied forces in moving hefty refueling gear across the globe. The Viper Kit caters to almost all aircraft in the U.S. military, from B-1B bombers to fifth-generation fighters and C-130 transport platforms. In addition to all the measures taken to expedite the takeoff, using afterburners in a fighter jet is another proven way to accelerate the takeoff. The F-15 Eagle is a twin-engine tactical fighter that houses two Pratt & Whitney F-100 engines with afterburners. For thrust acceleration over shorter periods, using an afterburner has more advantages than using a larger engine. As the name implies, additional fuel is sprayed into the airflow downstream of the turbine during afterburning. An afterburning engine has the ability to control the exit area with a variable nozzle to control the air pressure within the jet pipe. When the afterburner is in action, the nozzle increases the exit area to maintain proper exhaust gas velocity and pressure while avoiding building excessive back pressure within the jet pipe. The 220 variant of the afterburner turbofan could deliver a dry thrust of 14,590 pounds a piece during takeoff while firing the afterburner will increase the thrust to 23,770 pounds, which is a 63% increase in thrust. This significant increase in thrust will shorten the takeoff run and help the fighter become airborne promptly. In addition to the takeoff, afterburners come in handy during combat scenarios where the fighter can achieve tight maneuvers, while takeoff and landing remain the most demanding flight phases. Implementing innovative methods such as cartridge start and afterburners for takeoff and drogue parachutes for landing could improve the safety of these flight phases while reducing the time spent in each phase. The quicker an aircraft could rejoin the mission, the higher the chances of saving lives and claiming victory. That's the end of this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.